Okay, police in Victoria crossed a very dangerous and scary line by Sky News Australia. This weekend marks 32 years since the Chinese communists ruthlessly crushed the student protests at Tiananmen Square, massacring the lives of many and the hopes and dreams of millions of Chinese people. This weekend in Hong Kong, where only a couple of years ago there would be at least a couple of thousand people, a couple of 180 or so thousand people holding vigils to commemorate the anniversary, now the Chinese communists have crushed the memory of it and anyone who dares to show up faces five years in jail. Tiananmen was, of course, where the famous tank man bravely confronted the tanks, one solitary individual who dared to stare down the steely might of the Chinese communist state, armed against those tanks with nothing but a plastic shopping bag. We don't know what happened to the brave man, but it's a safe bet his fate was not dissimilar to the doctor who first blew the whistle on the coronavirus some 18 months ago and was soon mysteriously pronounced dead. Back in 1989, we all recognised China for the brutal, ruthless, totalitarian dictatorship it was, and the photo of Tank Man caused anger and outrage around the world. We hadn't yet developed this foolish fantasy encouraged here in Australia by Aldi shopping bags stuffed with cash handed around to Labour politicians and our universities that China would eventually become more like us once they'd had a taste of capitalism. What a joke. That was all part of the sleight of hand China pulled when they took and when they duped the British that they would keep the two systems that allowed Hong Kong to flourish as a capitalist powerhouse. That's all over now. But here's the irony. Rather than China becoming more like us, are we becoming more like them? Last year, we saw scenes in Victoria that I certainly never believed we would see in Australia. Yeah, the thing is that the irony is that whenever the police cracks down against uh, more left-wing protesters, uh, you don't emit a single peep, you people, right? You're just like, oh, the protesters were, like, destroying everything and we needed to bring in the, the police to reestablish uh, law and order, you know, and society, Western civilization, depends on law and order and it's degenerating with uh, neo-Marxist postmodernism. A police force as ruthless as in any tin pot totalitarian regime. Right. Police force. Can you hear yourselves? Honestly, right wingers complaining about police brutality. Are you, are you like, are you serious? Are you like, do you not feel just the weight of the irony crushing your soul? Now you're under arrest in relation to incitement. Incitement? Yeah. What's that? Now, you're not obliged to say or do anything, but anything you say or do may be given evidence. Excuse me, incitement for what? What the, What on earth? Yeah. Well, Excuse me, what What on earth? Yeah, just put your phone down. Can you, like, record this? I'm in my pyjamas. What's I this? I an ultrasound in an hour. Yeah, yeah pregnant. she's pregnant, so... How can It's funny because, like, if that if that woman, like, obviously it seems it seems a bit coercive, right? I, I I don't really know what the context of this thing is, but presumably she was like doing some sort of right wing incitement to violence thing, and like I, I'm not gonna necess I'm not gonna defend the I I don't know the situation I don't know if I should defend or not the actions of the police there, but what I'm saying is that this is so ironic because like normally they they would just say that like if it was like for for non right wing causes right they would just say oh that this is just a sort of a trashy person and it's just the police doing its job okay I, again note the hypocrisy <laughs> police dragged natalie benet from her car <laughs> Okay, but, but what is this? What is this about? Leave my shit. Don't break my stuff, you shit. I don't understand what this is about. Like, can we just 
see more than just these and images. And they broke down the door. The thuggery we have seen from the police, particularly in Victoria during the lockdown. Oh, now suddenly you're worried about police thuggery, you morons. Now suddenly you talk about it's it. It's chilling and shocked the free world. But it's not only the excessive use of physical force, it is the excessive use of authoritarian power. The police... Tell me about police, it. Police, rather than protecting the citizens, have become an extension of the government of Victoria, protecting the Tell me about bureaucrats it. Bureaucrats and the politicians. Tell me about it, you idiot. In this case, the Labour Party, from facing... In this... Oh, yeah, in this case, the Labour... So, basically, uh, if the Labour Party is in power, then suddenly the police force is uh, some sort of authoritarian uh, structure, like, and suddenly you are parroting BLM talking points. Because labor is in power and like, oh no. Much needed criticism and legitimate lawful protest. But it's hardly surprising. This is the same leftist premier, Dan Andrews, who has made no secret of his admiration. And like, yeah, and the, that's the first thing that all these works do, right? They, they equate like uh, any kind of wrong thing that a leftist person does. They equate it with like the massacres for, of Stalinism, right? It's like the purges of Stalin. It's like the famines of Mao and uh, like the, the murders in Tiananmen Square. And, and like they, they will equate this with like any, you know, it, it won't even be necessarily the police. It's like there's one student who, who like says like defund the police and they'll somehow equate that with with murders. They like they'll just that they, they will equate anything lefty with the what like the bad things that communists, you know, socialists, whatever regimes did. OK, that is just the standard. Uh. That's the standard right-wing Nazi playbook, okay? ...for communist China, going so far as to sign his secret Belt and Road deals exposed to... The and, like, yeah, and why, why is that wrong? Like, China's going to invest in Australia to, like, improve your country economically. Why is that a bad the world thing? ...by this program, by the way who also signed the entire state of Victoria up to the creepy and sinister UN Stronger Cities program. We need to look much closer at that. And the same Premier whose total disappearance since before Christmas after a bizarre incident has sparked an increasingly weird and feverish Melbourne rumour mill reminiscent of Soviet-era communism. So you're just evoking. So you just like you just evoke these things. We need to look into that more. And now you say mysteriously, blah, blah. And then you just leave that hanging and you're not actually explaining anything more. And so then we're just supposed to figure out somehow that this is some nefarious plot to like replace Australia with like Chinese communists or something. Again, coming from the state that in any case took over the, uh, the territory of uh, the original inhabitants. So, like, in a way, it would just be just a search. The simple reality is that there is no scientific or uh, science, science or scientific opinion that justifies the heavy-handed approach of the Victorian police to people who pose no genuine risk to public health and who are not at any serious risk of getting, getting or spreading the virus. Oh, OK, so it was the COVID thing. Yeah, of course, of course. Of course. So, basically... So basically, like, the police, as long as it's just shooting black people, that's fine. As long as it's, like, d being shitty towards, like, drunken Aboriginal people, that's fine. Okay? But if it's, like, white right-ringers who complain about COVID lockdown restrictions, then suddenly, oh, the police is super oppressive, even if they don't actually hurt them, uh, unlike they might hurt uh, actual, like, you know, people like in the United States or at like they hurt like and also in Australia. I mean, there's much less police violence in Australia, of course, but like it's all part of the same nefarious right wing sort of mindset, you know, and they're horrible. OK, you understand the total hypocrisy. The, the, the utter inconsistency. It's, it's disgusting. Yesterday, the Victorian police were at it again. Up there. <laughs> This was at a demonstration against the fourth Victorian lockdown in Melbourne. Perfectly legitimate demonstration, especially when you consider that the reality around the world... You're, again, you're anti-demonstration, except when it's for, for a stupid right-wing cause that's actually going to hurt people, right? That's like literally, if somebody protests against... If they were like protesting against police violence 
against people of color, then suddenly we say, oh yeah, they were looting and stuff and they're like, uh, you know, they have no respect, they're savage animals and something, right? That's what you'd say. Is now that you motherfucker, you have... motherfucking piece of shit, okay? You abomination. Claiming lockdowns simply do not work and they don't have the data to back them up. This chart shows those US states that locked down over winter in blue and those that didn't in red. And it is unmistakable. Did it occur to you that maybe the states that uh, locked down versus didn't lock down, like uh, they had a greater population density, which required them to lock down uh, because of that, like because there was that more risk? Because that is definitely Despite kind of the case. Other factors may come into play. But statistically, lockdown states have higher deaths per million than non-lockdown states. Again, in my opinion, in the months well, or said, years to come, we will be seeing massive class actions against those states, particularly Victoria, that enforced lockdowns, decimated businesses, destroyed lives for no good reason whatsoever. Worse, yeah, destroyed lives, just like and like COVID didn't destroy lives by like being a virus that kills you. Right. And this is no, unforgivable. Not... The Andrews government has used its political force to suppress legitimate debate and the freedom of the press. RV Yemeni. What? Is... This, is just, this is crazy, okay? In any case, you don't have press, pre press freedom in a, a, a super uh, inequalitarian capitalist society where only the super rich people get to basically manipulate the press. That is not true press freedom anyway. And this is why we even have a, a, a rag, like a rag is, is, a, is a euphemism, of course, just a, a complete, I don't even know what to call it. It's a completely terrible thing like Sky News Australia, thanks to the actions of one single individual named Rupert Murdoch, who has just been poisoning public discourse across the world for decades. He's a passionate young journalist for the YouTube Rebel News. He's been on Outsiders in the past. Arvi has covered the overreach of the police, of the Victorian pre police through all of Victoria's lockdowns. And I would argue that he not only has the right, but the professional duty to cover yesterday's demonstrations. Yet look what happened the night before, Friday night, before yesterday's demonstration. This is life in modern Melbourne. Arvi got a Stasi-like knock on the door at 8.30 at night. This? Hi, Arvi, my name's Alex, I'm from Dandenong Police Station. I uh, just got a letter here for you. Are you guys? the Assistant Commissioner. <laughs> just in relation to the uh, protest tomorrow, mate. What's your name? Uh, First Constable Alex Lyons from Dandenong. Who are you? So this is a letter to, uh, what's it about? Uh, it's in relation to the protest tomorrow, mate. Yeah, so what's the letter you're sending me from the Commissioner? Uh, the contents are for yourself to have a read. Um, why, is it, have a read. why is he sending me letters? What's that? Why is he sending me letters? Uh, we've got several... What time is it? It is 8.30. Mate, we've got several letters to deliver, so we're going to be off. Are you going, are you, hold on, are you going to Channel 7, Channel 9, are you going to Channel 10's house tonight? Sorry, mate, when... <clears throat> so, so why are you coming to my house to deliver me a message about a protest tomorrow? Well, that's what we've been advised to do by who, who the commissioner. So, so he advised you. Where are you from? Dandenong. We're all from Dandenong. You're all from Dandenong. So, so the commissioner asked you directly to come to my house, a journalist, and to send, give me a letter warning me of what? I don't know. It's in that in there. You got to read it, mate. So that's we've all just, we've Put aside the grotesque, gr grotesque actions of a police commissioner having the power to decide which journalists may or may not attend an event, a totalitarian giveaway if ever there was one, but you know we have crossed a very dangerous and scary line when the police start deciding in advance who is likely to commit possibly a crime in the future. Reminds me a bit of the totalitarian goons in Tom Cruise's Minority Report. Just shut up. Shut, look, I, shut up. Like, there's just... I, I can't stand this, like, this hypocrisy. 